Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Sutton Programme, hosted by G-Rocketry and sponsored by RS Components Grassroots. My name is Matthew and today we're going to discuss rocket aerodynamics. Aerodynamics looks at the way in which objects move through the air. This affects everything from rockets and aircraft to cars and wind turbines. But to fully understand why aerodynamics is so important in rocket design, we first need to look at the four forces of flight in their most basic form. These forces are lift, weight, thrust and drag. It is these forces alone that determine how an object moves through the air, whether it goes up or down, faster or slower. Weight is a force that results from gravity pulling down on objects. It's equal to the mass of an object multiplied by the amount of gravity, and it always acts towards the ground, no matter which orientation the object is in. Lift, on the other hand, is a force that is generated when air is turned by a solid object and accelerated. We know from Newton's third law that when the air is turned in one direction, an equal and opposite force will be generated in the opposite direction. This force is lift, and it always acts perpendicular to the oncoming flow. We learned last episode that thrust is the force that propels objects. On a rocket, this is generated by the propulsion system, where a working fluid is accelerated in one direction, and a thrust force is applied to the rocket in the other direction. If you haven't already seen episode 4, be sure to go back and check it out to fully understand how the propulsion systems on rockets work. The final force to consider is drag, which is the force that holds back on objects trying to move. Drag can be thought of like aerodynamic friction, as it makes it harder for the object to move forward in the direction of travel. There are two main types of drag to consider, parasitic drag and induced drag. Parasitic drag is caused simply by an object moving through a fluid. It's made of two main components, skin friction and form drag. Skin friction is caused as a result of the interaction between a fluid and a solid surface. As a fluid flows over an object, it is disturbed by imperfections on the surface. Every surface, no matter how smooth it seems, will have some level of roughness and therefore will generate some skin friction drag. However, a smooth and waxed surface will generate much less skin friction drag than a roughened surface. The other main contributor to parasitic drag is called form drag, which can be thought of as resistance to the motion of the object through a fluid. This type of drag is related to the physical shape of an object and results from the turbulence created as flow travels over the surface. The amount of turbulence, and therefore the total amount of form drag generated, can be minimised by streamlining the shape of an object. This is why we tend to see curved and complex geometries on objects like nose coats, as this helps to minimise the amount of form drag produced. Induced drag is an inevitable consequence of an object generating lift and is directly caused by the deflection of air. An object at a big angle relative to the oncoming flow of air will displace more air than one with a smaller angle and therefore will generate more lift. But as we now know, deflecting more air also increases the amount of induced drag produced. This is why most aircraft tend to climb in the air at a small angle relative to the oncoming flow as this helps to minimise the induced drag produced and therefore help keep the aircraft moving forwards. Now that we understand the four forces of flight, let's have a look at how they apply to a rocket. If we first take a rocket straight after launch, we can clearly see the thrust pushing the rocket upwards and the weight and drag acting against this in the opposite direction. Looking at the rocket in this way, we can clearly see that drag can have a huge effect on the performance of a rocket. This is why engineers design components like the fins and nose cone to minimise the total amount of drag created and therefore allow the rocket to move faster. However, we can see there is no lift generated by the rocket at this point. This is because there is no angle between the rocket and the oncoming flow and so the air is not turned and accelerated to produce lift. Now let's look at our rocket during flight. We can now see lift starting to come into effect. There is now an angle between the rocket and the oncoming air, so lift is produced. This can be generated by components like the nose cone and body tube, however, the majority is produced by the fins. The lift force in a rocket is used to stabilise and control the direction of flight. Another important thing to recognise is where these forces act on the rocket. The weight acts through what is called the centre of gravity, which is where the combined weight of the rocket appears to be concentrated. When the rocket rotates, it does so about the centre of gravity. The lift and drag acts through what is known as the centre of pressure, like the centre of gravity, this is the approximate point at where all the aerodynamic forces are concentrated. In order for a rocket to be stable, the centre of pressure needs to be closer to the tail end than to the centre of gravity. If these two points were too close, the rocket would tumble out of control. Stability increases as the distance between these two points increases, and so this is why rockets tend to use fins at the tail end. 
as this moves the set of pressure downwards and therefore increases stability. Aerodynamics is a hugely complicated topic and engineers can spend years trying to develop a single part and optimise it as far as possible. That being said, I hope this introduction to the basic concepts behind rocket aerodynamics has been useful and you can now understand why components like rocket nose cones are shaped the way they are. Thank you to Iris Components Grassroots for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to find out some more about rocket aerodynamics, be sure to check out the accompanying article on designsmart.com. Thank you for checking into this episode of the Subtle Programme. We'll see you next time.